Lisbon originally, uh, Portugal. So I've um, been doing this for about 20 years of my life, music reproduction, uh, and assisting uh, couples and mostly my boys since Portugal, about what, 16, 17, around 17 or 18 years. I, the 50s are not kind to me, uh, let's just put it that way. Um, but um, um, in doing, we, I was working, everybody, if they don't know my little bio, is uh, I'm a pharmacist that became a doctor, that became an OBGYN, that repeated OBGYN back again, and uh, at, uh, did fertility at Columbia University, residency here at Baylor, and I've been working actually, I was working with Michael, that had Connecticut fertility, and then um, I don't work here since uh, the last end of the year. Uh, the place has moved on into something, uh, into something that you know they're going to move on. And I'm having the same thing that I've done all my life, and will continue to do, but now in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, so it's a, it's it's a good facility uh, that we are finalizing, and it's open in August. Um, so this is a, this is an old me with a brand new exterior of me, uh, which is this time I get to pick the knobs in the car and you know all the structure of the new car that we are providing. Um, Technology-wise, um, the same thing that I implemented in my previous facility. I was a little bit more on the academic side on that part, especially in radiology, creating embryos and making sure that we you know, increase the rates and before genetics was a big thing. Um, I, I was in that part of the genetics screening testing since back in my Baylor days, basically back in 2017, 2016, when we started to do a lot of research back at Baylor, and then I continued there. Um, so, um, what are we? Um, and I'm, I'm very blunt in saying this, which is um, there are many facilities, as you know, and you've met facilities out there. They're all good facilities. What facilities? Facilities as in practices or agencies and everyone there that you met outside. Yeah. We all work in the same, in the same for the same purpose to, to create a paternity um, for whomever. I mean, I've dedicated more to probably the gay community, and some folks are more dedicated to all the community and all the parents that want to to have children and they can't either because they have sperm issues and they have egg issues or they're single dads or couples that want to have children. Process is uh, it's more simple but it can be very complicated. It's more simplistic. The approach of having a child should be very simple. You want somebody that is shouldn't be a disease because fertility is for sure not a condition um, fertility is um, an acquired right um, in the end i'll show you like a three uh, two minute kind of little thing that we've put out for our conversation here today which is kind of a video of what we are but indeed that's what we do is we make the process try to make the process safe which is the most important thing. And then, besides of making it safe, successful, streamlined, and simple. And throughout all the years that I've worked in surrogacy, uh, egg donation, we call it third party, because there is always a third party involved either. It could be the egg donation, or it could be also even the sperm, but in this case, the surrogate in most cases. Um, the simple part, I usually tell everybody that is the most important part, is creating embryos. Um, embryos come from an egg source. The egg source is dependent, is the most important factor for creating what you most need, which is the children that are going to be yours and you're going to have an implantation, you're going to have a success. There's numbers for this. I mean, we can go very pragmatically. What we do is have those structures inside of our housing, which is we have an egg donation portion of it, which you can choose actually your egg donor anywhere else. You don't have, and I say this all the time, 
I know that you know practices clinics. Um, I usually use slash because some folks like the word clinic, the other ones like practice. I use both. So um, in having that, um, I say that you don't have to pick them in your clinic. You don't have to pick them in the agency. You have to pick the one that actually is going to be the right one for you. Means um, if you do not feel comfortable with the choices that you have presented, they just have to be screened by your physician. My job over here in being American fertility, as you see it there, is really today not that it's Dr. X, it's clinic practice X. And your physician, in your practice, your coordinators, your financial advisors, which I'll present in a little second, is to make sure that the choices that you want to be made your egg donor are committed in a new format in a very safe way. She probably is a good candidate. Um, it's the first time that she is donating, but maybe um, this, uh, you know, exams that she does, she doesn't have a good quantity of eggs or something else has happened and you need to know that preemptively and you're not going to be or have to be the the ones intervening and saying, listen, I'm going to screen all these moments, and I'm going to be very effective because I will know everything that is going on. No, it should be your facility. Oh, please come in. How are you? Um, try to help us. Um, so your physician should be your screening, your safety guard for all that you're going to do. Okay, you picked your donor. What should you do? And you already know the process. I mean, today you have multiple talks where you're going to go from choosing your egg donor, testing yourselves, um, having a sample that I usually recommend to everyone. I tell this all the time, Jess. Um, having a sperm sample frozen in any office that can, in most offices these days can. Um, that are FDA approved means because we're going to use a surrogate, we would um, want for that sample to be aggregated with some testing on your blood for infectious diseases and also a physical examination, testing that you're okay. You froze it, it's valid for 400 years, 500 years, whatever it is that freezing is valid these days. And you have about, on average, 25 million of sperm that you're going to be able to finish off and having them. And when I warmed them up, I thaw them, we're gonna have the most likely sufficient sperm to use it for your cycle. Now, why am I saying all of this? Because you preemptively can already be done with a portion of the part of the process that you're going to initiate. Your egg donation, you chose, you went through your physician, he said, it's an okay decision, we are committed with this, she gets her screening, you get your screening, which is also genetically done, and that genetic between you and her needs, it's the only time that you need really not to match. If you have something, no matching with her because matching a potential problem that you could have on your own blood could have an increased risk of about 95% of the table of two by two. She has something, you have something, you're not going to have to disease because you know one of your relatives pass it on to you. I have two of those by the way. And I only have one of my children, but unfortunately, uh, Ready for five minutes, okay, oh, very good. Oh, I didn't know that well, was that, that fast. That went fast, the 20 minutes. Um, anyways, let me, I will continue anyways. If I don't finish, it's, you know, I preferred a good conversation um, than a rushed conversation that we don't also finish appropriately. But the surrogate is an important piece, but again, the choices for a surrogate, you're gonna have with you with your agency. There is a lag there. And we work, I know most of the agencies and I've been working with them for years. Um, all the people over here out there and many other people that are valid throughout the country. And them and your clinic are going to actually interact very well together and try to make the best choice for your surrogate. Which indeed is going to be the implantation part. You're going to have an implantation, you need to make sure that She's valid for that. She will come for screening at the clinic. She will spend the day with us or with any other facility that does the screening. And then you're going to have that confirmation. You finish contracts. And then there is the PICTA, which is the transfer day. 
And the transfer day should be actually, I usually say, more serene day. Everything was already done. And I know that, you know, all, all that I touch base with that go through this process is, this is the most nerving, wracking moment because there's going to be the transfer of my embryo in. But it actually is a very safe procedure, a very replicatable procedure. Many times we do this, and it's not the act that is going to be the determined factor. What determines really is all of the other things that we did before. So, um, trying to tell you what American fertility is, is we are a group of people that are very experienced in this. Kathy Oaks over there is my financial director, say hi. Hello. Um, and I have also Shante. And Shante Rivera Bonilla is my coordinator. And they've been doing this individually, one for 18 years, and the other one for about 15 to 16, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm sorry to be dating you. Um, so in terms of what they do, we do it very well. Um, it's a choice. Um, I know that as any, you know, producing a new facility, even though, you know, being old in this and being experienced in this, it's always a momentum different than the past. Come and check us out. Our, I think I, I'm supposed to be able to transfer the most important message. It's not that we are most affordable, which we probably will be. It's not that we are in Greenwich which is a very cosmopolitan and very aggregating place for many. It's not um, the coordination that is valid, it's you. All of this, it's not because I am doing this for me, because I was blessed in having helped myself to go through and get my own children, and now I'm just paying back. So, two minutes, perfect timing. Um, I'm going to show it, it's going to be, I'll, I'll sit over here and uh, kind of try to go and bear with me because it's a small little video that we put it up, but hopefully, does anyone have any questions? Do you have any questions? Well, we talked, but I think 20 minutes went away so fast. It's okay. It's about okay. 10. Yeah. It's a good place. Actually, part of this is um, um, the inspiration was to have the first practice in the United States to really come out. Sorry, I had to use my own words. Uh, <laughs> and say this: we are a third-party egg donation service facility that it is going to be dedicated for that. Nothing wrong in my colleagues that do surgery or you know other procedures very well. I just we develop a very good skill set and a heart for what we do. And besides of the heart is we have to be precise and you need something that is gonna work for you. Build your Excel sheet like I tell everybody, uh, build your own program list to talk to everyone. Uh, see the difference. It's not in this 20 minutes that I wish that would not come on so fast in trying to figure out if it clicks, it clicks, but always have a pragmatic side on all of this and say, listen, um, you seem like a good person, can be me or any other person, can be an agency or a clinic, but you need to be very precise and say, listen, this is the best for me economically, pragmatically, and also, yes, somebody that will take good care of you. Any of us will.